Good morning. This is Steve Finland on September 19th, 2021, coming to you on behalf of the First Church of West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Uh, welcome to everybody, and uh, we'll give you a sermon, a song, and a prayer today. The song is Let All Things Now Living, number 34 in our hymnal. And so let us begin with the sermon, One Such Child. <clears throat> the first scripture is James uh, three sixteen to four three and four seven to eight. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. These conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And Mark 9, 30-37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. May God give his blessing to my interpretation today. Sometimes we get used to hearing the same familiar words of a story and we don't stop and think about what is being said. Maybe as perhaps with the Lord's Prayer, where we don't think about God's will being done and for us to learn forgiveness. Here we have welcoming the child. I think that means two distinct but related things. It means becoming innocent and trusting toward God the way a child trusts its parents. But it also means, of course, welcoming actual children and being kind to them. One such child is a concrete expression and refers to an actual child being welcome, being cared for, and no stumbling block being placed in its way. Actually, one of the fruitful results of Christianity is that now we are perhaps more welcoming toward children than we are toward adults, although we should be welcoming to all. No other religion puts such a premium on children. Most religions have a place for honoring parenthood and encouraging the bringing of children into the world. But Jesus gives value to the actual child as a person and a person possessing religious qualities. Children were considered to be the least and the last, but Jesus says whoever wants to be first must be last of all. And some who are last will be first, and some who are first will be last. Elsewhere he says, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And this resonates with a line from the letter of James, the Lord's brother. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Drawing near to God is what the trusting child is able to do. Adults are often craving for something else, such as the status and power for which the apostles were arguing on the way. 
According to James, such cravings that are at war within you cause envy and can even lead to murder. Envy and competition spring eternal in the human heart, and James sees these as causing a potentially violent craving within. Coveting can lead to violence. The craving is painful and moves one to take action, maybe lying or plotting, rather than physical violence. All these selfish actions separate us from God. When we place our primary craving for ourselves alone, we only have room for those cravings, and we become a vortex of violent feelings. But when one craves wisdom and God's guidance instead of status, one learns how to be pure, peaceable, gentle, and full of mercy. Wisdom yields a harvest of righteousness sown in peace. Sometimes James's words sound a lot like his brother Jesus's. The harvest of righteousness is the result of having spiritual motivation, and that can be compared to becoming like a child, which means be, being spiritually receptive and pure of motive. Not necessarily pure through and through, but pure in our intention to turn to God. God will meet us where we are and as we are, warts and all, and takes us where we need to go. This involves the eyes of our heart being opened, enabling us to perceive truth and receive spiritual power. We have an experience of spiritual illumination and warmth. We are drawn by the attractive power of love and the satisfying power of truth. Sometimes Jesus says things that are shocking, like the remark about welcoming a child being like welcoming God. The mild shock that Jesus' sayings cause is paralleled by the more intense shock when we experience an inward change of heart. He tries to train his disciples to be ready for that experience of surprise and reversal. He would turn us upside down. He would get us to let go of our prejudice against Samaritans, or whatever is equivalent to that. He would get us to drop our feelings of massive superiority to children, or to women, or to Gentiles, that is, foreigners. He would get us to drop our feeling that we are owed something. That was the purpose of the parable of the workers hired at different times of the day but being paid the same. He is intentionally shocking our sense of fairness so that we can be prepared to accept the overflowing generosity of God. Unless we are periodically shocked by Jesus, we are probably not learning from him. Jesus wants us to grow and to expand our horizons spiritually. Surprisingly, Jesus recommends the spiritual simplicity of the child, joined with the cleverness of the serpent. As he says in Matthew 10, Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Use some wise foresight and some psychological insight. Don't be naively blind to the evil motivations that some people have. But retain your unselfish urge and your intellectual hunger and curiosity. Part of our childlike spirituality is to be always curious and learning. It might involve learning about history and psychology, or discovering other cultures. These fields of learning can augment our spiritual lives. In conclusion, whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. Progress in Jesus' kingdom does not mean dominance or power, but learning to serve others. And draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. It does take a decision on your part to make that effort and to trust that there will be results, even if the results are not accompanied by bright lights or heavenly voices. It might just be a still, small voice whispering truth to your heart. But it can bring a harvest of good things into your life if you cherish it. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. May your heart be open to the still, small voice of God. Thanks be to God.
And so we come to a hymn of thanksgiving, number 34. Let all things now living. <clears throat> Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator triumphantly raise who fashioned and made us protected and stayed us, who still guides us unto the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, His light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night. Till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished, as forward we travel from light into light. His law he enforces the stars in their courses and sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean proclaim Him divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration a song let us raise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to god in the highest hosanna and praise let everything give praise to god in joy for the life we've been given and the experiences we have every day which we can share with God. If you join me in an attitude of prayer, I'll pray for some of the people in our close circle and people in the bigger circles of the human race. Oh God and Jesus, we pray for Julie and for Arthur who takes care of her. We pray that Julie's pain may be diminished and that she may have some recovery from her health condition. We pray for Todd and Matt, Lori and Bella. And we pray for Norman. We pray for Jim and Pedro, and Lance and Lucy. We pray for Lois and Wendy and Morton and Jace. We pray for Warren Jr with his COPD. We pray for John and Barbara that, uh, that she may get a clean bill of health. We pray for all these people that they may get new strength and new healing and draw upon their family and upon you for love. Jesus, we pray for people suffering from the wildfires out west in our country we pray for people suffering around the world, people in Afghanistan and Burma and China. We pray for religious freedom, that there may be respect for people's right to worship. And so we pray that we will do our part always to further the kingdom of God here on earth and in our hearts where it has to begin. And Jesus, we say the prayer that you taught your disciples when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so seek wisdom, as James says, and seek the sincerity of a child, as Jesus says. 
and seek his spirit to be with you and to fill your mouth and your heart all day long. Go in the joy of the kingdom of God and the love of Jesus. Amen.